All right, so I want to go back just a little bit, and I want to talk a little bit more about server-side rendering versus static site generation. So now that we actually have a connection to our SQL database, we can actually fetch data, okay? But most importantly, I can actually start to show you the main difference between static site generation and uh, server-side rendering, okay? So recall that when we talked about these two concepts, the, the main difference was when the HTML was generated. Remember that static site generation, all of the HTML pages are generated during build time, which means when you're ready to serve your application for production, you're going to run the build script, next build. And what will happen is it'll generate all of those HTML pages, and then you can serve that over and over and over again. When it comes to server-side rendering, the HTML is generated upon each request. So let's say, for example, if you have data that is going to be changed over time, it's going to serve different data if that data changes. With static site generation, you only generate it once. Whatever data that is fetched from some database or some remote server is going to be the data that's going to be used for the HTML until you regenerate everything again, assuming that the data changes over time. Okay? So remember, the main difference is that with server-side rendering, the data is generated, oh, I'm sorry, the HTML is generated upon request, okay? With static site generation, it's generated once during build, okay? So let's actually see that in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify our users page. We're going to fetch the database for all the users. Recall that in the previous episode, we actually populated our database with a bunch of users. Let's go ahead and fetch those users and... Uh, return it as props so that way our users page actually receives it so in case you forgot how we do that well let's start off with uh, let's start off with static site generation okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to implement the get static props function and remember oh whoops a expert async function I'm used to uh, arrow functions that's why but okay, so export async function get static props. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so remember that it takes in one parameter, which is the context, and the type is get static props context. Okay, and inside this function, what we can do is we can fetch data. Okay, we can fetch data from anywhere from our file system. We can fetch it from the database. We can fetch it from an API, wherever, okay? Now, we actually did implement this uh, users route to fetch all of the users for us. Now, next, the Next.js documentation actually recommends you don't use this API to fetch it because it creates more complexity. Instead, they actually recommend you to just connect to the database and just use the Prisma client and get the data from get static props. And it's a lot faster too. So what we'll do instead of just instead of making another HTTP request to this endpoint, we're just going to go ahead and get an instance of Prisma client. We'll create one, and then we'll go ahead and just get our data. So the way that's going to look like is this. So, whoops. So let's go ahead and get the Prisma client. So I'm going to go ahead and just import it up top over here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, declare a variable and we'll initialize it with the value of whatever prisma.user.findMany returns. Whoops. Okay. So this is going to give us all of the users. So it's going to be an array of users. And all we're going to do is just return this as props. Okay. So users is going to be an array that is going to be populated up top over here. Okay, so now I sh should be able to get this as a prop. All right, but the problem here is that because we're using TypeScript, it's complaining that uh, there's no such type. So we're gonna have to create a custom type. So let's do uh, props users. Now, uh, let's see, we can actually get this user type from the Prisma client. Now, remember, with Prisma Client, it'll generate custom types based off of your models. So we don't actually need to even create a custom user type. Prisma will do that for us, which is very, very convenient. Okay. So remember, uh, this type props, we're doing this so that way we can actually pass that 
between angle brackets for next page so that way we can actually uh, have type safety over here okay and remember it's an array of users so let's go ahead and console log users and just look at the console so i'm going to go ahead and make a request to this page now and let's go ahead and look at the console you're going to see that we have an array six users that's how much users we have in our database currently all right now let's go ahead and just render this stuff out we'll do this underneath the unordered list so we'll do uh empty curly brace and then users dot map and then we'll just use a div component or a div and then we'll go ahead and group everything together so let's do h1 user or not h1 sorry uh user dots email and what's going on oh yeah we need to pass in the key i'll do it in just a moment uh so let me also pass in some other stuff too let's pass in the first name okay and then we'll pass in the last name and i think you get the idea you can literally pass in whatever you want okay but i'll just do this for now let's pass in the key because we are rendering an array for the key we'll do user.id all right so let's go ahead and look at our page all right cool so let me close out this side over here let me zoom out just a little bit uh let me actually do one more thing because all of our data is the same let me go ahead and also render the user id as well just so that we know what is what okay cool so we can see that all of our data is being rendered and that's great now remember we're using get static props okay and because we're in dev mode even if we were to populate our database with new data it would pop up so let me show you so if i were to make a post request right now using postman okay so let's make a post request let's do this so okay, so i just created a new user if i refresh the page you're going to see that that user will pop up just fine okay so again we are in dev mode but we're using get static props and because we're in dev mode it's still going to pre preload or pre-render the page every single time but watch what happens uh if we actually build our application so we run the build script right now okay so i'm going to go ahead and terminate the application i'm going to run the build script so you'll run the build script when you're ready to uh, serve your application for production okay so i'm going to run the build script right now okay and then i'm going to go ahead and run next start so let's do that so let's run next start so this is going to serve the production ready application so now i'm going to refresh the page and you're going to see that we have our application working and this is in a production mode okay if i go to blogs page that'll also work too now watch what happens i'm going to go to postman okay and i'm going to go ahead and create a new resource okay so our api layer still works just fine but if i refresh the page notice how none of the data is showing up right you can see that none of the the new data is showing up the old data is there all of the previously generated data is there but the new data is not going to pop up and remember the reason why is because when we run next build and it's going and when we use get static props get static props is going to be called only during build time okay only during build time so when we have get static props we run the build script it's going to go ahead and fetch data from our database and then populate the html templates with the corresponding data okay if we were to update our database if we were to do whatever we want with our database it doesn't matter because we already have the generated html that's going to be served over and over again okay now watch what's going to happen i'm going to do this instead of get static props i'm going to change this to get server side props and i'm going to change this from get static props context to get server Oops. get server side props context wait hold on 
Okay, sorry about that. My keyboard is bugging out. Okay, so remember, get server side props. We're gonna use this instead. The logic is still gonna be the same. Nothing really changes. Okay, we're but the only difference is that we're using server side rendering now. Okay, so let me go ahead and terminate this, and let's just run it in dev mode, and let's refresh the page, and you're gonna see the new data is gonna pop up. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a couple more posts. Or not post users. And now watch this. If I refresh, you're going to see that they all pop up. Okay. Now, uh, even though we are running in dev mode, let me actually run this in build mode. Let me build it first and then let me then run start again. Okay. I shouldn't have ran in dev mode. I should have. Uh, well, okay. It's fine. Um, I just need to change that real quick. But let me just run it in build and then let me run start. Okay. So right now, we are running the production build. We just ran next build and now we're running next start. So the application is live in production mode. Now watch this. I'm going to create a couple more users. Okay. And remember we're in production mode. Okay. Previously, when we were in production mode, our function was get static props. Okay. So that uses static site generation, but now we're using get server side props, which uses server side rendering. Now watch this. If I refresh, you're going to see the data is going to appear new data is going to appear as i create it before it wasn't appearing but now it is and the reason why is because of the difference in pre-rendering okay when we pre-render with static site generation all the pre-rendering is done during the build phase when we run next build with server-side rendering we are pre-rendering every single time we make a request so what happens is get server-side props is going to be called whenever we make a request and it's always going to fetch the database for all the users so in other words it's going to give us the latest data and it's going to populate uh the html template with the latest data okay with static site generation aka when we use get static props it's only going to fetch all the data during build time so whatever data is in the database is going to be used in the html template I really hope this made a lot of sense because I really felt like this was a good example to really understand the major difference between static site generation and server side rendering. So hopefully that will answer and clarify a lot of your concerns and questions about what the main difference is between the two methods and when you should want to prioritize static site generation over server side rendering and the other way around. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.